in a couple of days there are going to be a lot of people here. So while we have the opportunity to make the most of your solitude, try to find some time to be by yourself. In Pali this is called Gaya Riveka, physical solitude, where you're just away from other people. And then you try to develop Jitta Riveka, mental solitude. In other words, you're not sitting there just talking to yourself about all kinds of stuff. You're with one thing here in the present moment, the breath in and of itself, just coming in, going out. And as long as you're going to have a companion, make the breath your companion. Try to have a nice friendship with the breath. As soon as you focus on the breath, sometimes you find that it immediately tenses up and gets un uncomfortable. Well, try to back into it, sidle up to it. In other words, find some other way of approaching the breath where you're not putting too much pressure on it. so that you're bathed in the breathing sensations all around the body. In this way it's good to be alone. The, the body gets healed, the mind gets healed, and you begin to see things a lot more clearly. This is one of the reasons that we recommend that if you have some issue in life you're trying to think about, wait until the end of a meditation period and then give yourself, say, ten minutes. So okay, now that the mind has been calm, it's been treated with the breath, soothed with the breath. Let's see what it thinks, how it looks at things from this perspective. And sometimes nothing will come up, and sometimes interesting things will come up. But before that point, don't think about that topic at all. Pose the question at the beginning of the meditation, then put it aside, and don't go anywhere near it during the course of the meditation. And then at the very end you can think about it. Because the mind is like anything that you use, you have to take care of it. Otherwise you wear it out. The image that they like to use in the forest tradition is the mind is like a knife. And if you just keep chop, chop, chopping away, after all the knife gets dull. There are times when you have to take the knife and sharpen it and then bathe it in oil so it doesn't get rusty, and then you put it away. And then when you need to use it, okay, then you bring it out. It's the same with your mind. You don't want to be thinking about things all the time especially scattered things around the past and the future. Thinking about this person, thinking about that person. If you're going to think, think about something that's right here. The sensation of the breath coming in going out. Make this your friend for the time being. Make this your companion. This is the only other person in the world that matters while you're meditating. And if you have that attitude, again, the qualities of solitude, instead of being loneliness, becomes something that's really refreshing, something you look forward to, because you realize that it's healing for the body, healing for the mind, and enables you to take on your other duties when you are dealing with other people in a much more effective way, in a way that doesn't cause you any harm, doesn't cause them any harm. That can be your gift to yourself and your gift to the world.